the, the epidemic in West Africa is severe and it's getting worse fast. And um, what people don't understand is this outbreak started last December. Starting at March 31st, Doctors Without Borders said the hospitals in Guinea and in, in, um, in Liberia are overwhelmed and they were crying for help. As late as September 2nd, they were telling the, um, uh, the UN and others that the help being provided is a shambles, that this is a disease that is doubling in the number of cases every three weeks, and our response was pathetic. We, we simply mounted no substantial response. It might have been the best thing that has happened, that the first case to leave the African continent came to America, because it brought our mobilization to realize what happens there matters to us here. And suddenly we are now mobilizing thousands of people to go. The CDC has mounted the largest global um, operation for public health um, in U.S. government history. Uh, and it is going to be working district by district to create emergency treatment units and isolate the sources. Now, what the second part of this is, this is a disease that's eminently stoppable with basic public health me measures. The most basic infection control measures that, that we fo generally follow, should be following, in our own hospitals. And so it's highlighting the fact that it's in the places where the health systems are broken down. You have people being turned away from hospitals because the beds are overwhelmed. There are calls now for closing borders, even for a travel ban here in the U.S. from West Africa. What's your take on that? Um, so the, it's a real danger to do that. Uh, in order to stem the tide, one of the things that the models show is that if you just try to shut, a, shut this down with a travel ban, healthcare workers can't get in. The, um, the disease just explodes within the confined area. It spreads even more widely, and you've only delayed it coming abroad by a few weeks. The reality is that we will see um, a, a few cases over the next months that may come here. We know how to contain it. We know what the checklist is for taking care of it, and it will not become an epidemic here. The general public is not at risk. This is a hard virus to spread. It's harder than the common cold. It does not spread in the air. It spreads because if you have contact with the vomit, the blood, the stool, the uh, saliva of someone who is actively sick and infected, you are the only one at risk, and those are caregivers. That's why the people getting this are health care workers and family members. And um, basic measures end up containing it and containing it very quickly. Doesn't this also go to the issue of um, public versus corporate health? I mean, with epidemics like these, it's not in the interest of corporations to have developed cures for this. They don't have a large profit margin. World Health Organization, World Health Assembly all had their budgets gutted at a time when it seems we need this more than ever. Yeah, the vaccine um, uh, for Ebola had been in, had been in development for uh, more than a couple of years in advance. Um, and uh, the interest in it was never going to come from a uh, for-profit corporation, because, you know, you couldn't bank on there being this kind of epidemic to, to drive it. And so instead, um, the government, you know, you need public investment in public health and in this kind of research. It sat fallow. Now there's tremendous interest. And now you have the NIH and, um, and a pharmaceutical company gearing back up this drug that was on the shelf for a couple of years.